doesn't matter to me. I can go if you guys want. Sure. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about that Sony. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, so, okay. So let's preface by saying that we know nothing, absolutely nothing, about whether or not this camera is real or not. You know, it's all rumors, hearsay. But reports have been surfacing uh, that there's supposedly a new, even more entry-level camera coming from Sony. Now, as Chris mentioned earlier, the a7 III, which sold like hotcakes, by the way, um, was their basic camera. And it, you know, it came in under the 2000 mark and it offered a lot of professional features that, you know, trickled down from the more expensive and more premium systems like the a9 and the a7 R3 and then eventually the a7 R4. Now we haven't seen the a7 IV yet, um, but we have seen a7 R4, we've seen a9, a9 II, and we've also since um, seen Sony dip their toes back into the APS-C game with the a6100 and the a6600. Now, you know, the a5 feels like an interesting camera, you know, if it's real, you know, obviously. Because, do you think it's going to have a rangefinder style body, uh, or do you think it's going to be SLR style? I, so, interesting that you asked. That, that's what I was going to go with. The A7 bodies are already pretty small, but their 6000 series, the A6000 series of cameras are even tinier because they're that rangefinder style. You know, they don't have to have that prism-looking thing on top where the EVF is. In fact, here is my A7R4. Are you guys yeah. hearing the thunder right now, by the way? Oh, I heard a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Should I close the window? No, yeah, you're fine. All right, yeah, cool. You're good. It's just like a, someone moving furniture or something. New York problems. But uh, yeah, so here's my A7R4. And I've got, I've got my 90 F2.8 micro on me. It's not that huge of a camera. It may look a little big because I've got the vertical grip on there, which I know Chris absolutely hates. So have a good look at this grip that you hate, Chris. <laughs> um, do you, see the, do you see the smile on Brett's face right now? I do. I do. <laughs> 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 He's like Mr. Burns of him. Like, yes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, you know, it's not a huge camera. So if they took out this top part, where traditionally on, you know, on DSLRs, that's where the front of prism used to be. There's no reason that you have to have it there, have the EVF there, um, aside from the fact that people are just used to the form factor. Now, for people that prefer range finders, just get rid of this guy. It's already significantly small. If you, if you take this camera into Photoshop and just chopped up the top, it's already, you know, Slightly, it's only it's marginally larger than the 6000 series cameras, but it's already pretty small. As long as they have the same grip that we've seen in the A92 and the A7 Mark IV, I think that would be that that part would be critical because one thing that a lot of people kind of complain about Sony's has always been the fact that their um, the ergonomics aren't that great, right? The people complain about their grip all the time, they don't feel like cameras to me. Yeah, well, the, like, you know, obviously that's a personal thing uh, depending on how your hands are. You know, some people have big hands, some people have small hands. Um, I have perfect hands. Well, in, in, in that case, your perfect hands don't, like, you know, this grip is not perfect for your hands. You know? No, it, it's a flawed grip. Um, yeah, for me, I, pre I actually really like the grip on the R4, but, um, you know, that's a personal thing. But they need something sizable and, you know, they, it's pretty much a sure bet that it's going to use the new Z batteries. So that's got to go somewhere, you know? Uh, but, you know, this camera, for it to even make sense, it's got to be in the oh, 1,000, 1,200 range. You know, are you talking about like EOSRP territory? The EOSRP is like 1299, right, Brett? Yeah. So uh, yeah. No, it dropped, it dropped down to 999. Ooh. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, on so sale for eight ninety nine even yeah, right now. Like, you know, it begs the question: like, how do you even price a camera like this? Because obviously, Sony's going to have to take stuff out in order to push out a camera in this price point. But 
but at what at what cost? You know, you you can't release a camera that has you know worse autofocus performance. You know, it has to be at least on par with what we're seeing with the A7. Otherwise, it makes no sense. Look, if you're going to save some money, might as well just buy a used camera. I think so, you're probably going to see a mixture of of something like the the AF system from the A6100, which is fantastic. Yeah, which mixed which is with, already yeah, which yeah. is already phenomenal, right? Mixed with the level of EVF and LCD from the A6100, A6400. You yeah. really think it's going to have an EVF? I don't think so. Well, I don't know. Because if they just lobbed off the EVF for the sake of making a smaller body... I'd buy it. Right, but you arguably would be in the minority because, you know, you're talking about a full-frame camera with no EVF, people would just go nuts. Probably. Because people like to complain. And, you know, um, they're also used to what they're used to. So without an EVF, it's hard. Um, here's well, an example. Here, go ahead, man. Or, or they go the M62 route and uh, sell an EVF as an accessory. Well, there, that, that's possible. You know, like the GFX has something like that where you could take off, you could actually remove the EVF. Now the body's even smaller. Um, that's a possibility. Or we may see something similar to what they've done with the RX100 series with the pop-up EVF. Or the RX1 series. I mean, the first oh, yeah, one that. didn't have an EVF, I remember at all. It was a point-and-shoot. Um, uh, I haven't used that camera in a long time. Yeah, and then the second one had an EVF. Uh, and that's all that we have right now. Right. But, you know, it, it's only going to get so small, right? Uh, so I think it's going... You know, if the off A5 uh, is real, we're talking about something in between a 6000 series body, which is just, you know, it's a rangefinder style. You don't have this top bump over here. Or, and, you know, so yeah, just take, like, take this, shave the top bump. And that's probably what it's going to end up looking like. Um, whether or not it's probably going to be smaller than that, though. Um, it's possible, you know, that's that's up in the air, but yeah, you know, where else, are, like, what else can they take out to make it that cheap? Well, IBIS. yeah, I guess yeah, would be one thing, be stabilized. It's, you know, you're not going to get a stabilized body, it, yeah. You know, it's one, it's going to make it a bigger camera, two, it's expensive, okay. Um, you're also not going to probably get the latest sensor. Um, I think it'll probably be like 20 or 24. You know, somewhere in that range. Right now, the A7 III is 24 megapixels. So, um, if the A5 is going to be even more entry level than that, then it stands a reason that it would have a lower resolution, which isn't always a bad thing. You know, lower resolution means better uh, low light performance usually. so it could actually be a benefit to some photography if you shoot a lot of events uh, in low light as long as the AF performance is still on par with what we've seen from Sony this could very well be like a B-cam for you, you know? I, I, I have a feeling we're going to see something along the lines of because the A7 II has got to die at some point and that's right now that is their sub $1,000 full frame camera right so but at some point they're just going to stop making the thing you know, or they're just going to rebadge it as an A5. That's an interesting thought. I didn't think of that. But in that case, you know, yeah, it, it wouldn't be the first time we've seen companies do that. Just put it in a new shell. Right. So, new liquor paint. and Yeah. Know. Yeah, but if they do that, then they're going to have to make it refreshed every year. How so? I mean, if they're taking a previous ca a camera and they're putting it basically in another body... Well, then, I mean, they've done something similar recently. Just look at there's um the what is it the ZV one or ZX one? I forget. I that that's a one. Yeah, I was actually camera. gonna mention that camera. So that yeah. pricing, I think it's like it's like seven forty nine or something right. like but that. In, in essence, you're getting the RX one hundred five in a fresh coat of paint and a different AF algorithm. You know, it's things that we've seen Sony do before. They've upgraded AF performance before with firmware. 
and you know they've also rebadged cameras before. Like, so you know, other companies have rebadged so many cameras. Right. Uh, oh, geez, Hasselblad. <laughs> um, you know. Still one of my most brilliant headlines. Hasselblad announces the Sony A99. It was great. People got so angry. Anyway, um, so if if they price this, you know, I'm really trying to figure it out. Uh, that's way, that lightning. That's that that loud, yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, sorry about that. So the RX100 Mark Seven is like twelve ninety nine. Like... So how could they get it at? A, I don't know. They would have to really yeah. drop the price well, on that camera too, you know. No. Well, you also here's what you're also not going to get. You're not going to get a touch screen. You know. Sorry. I'm not buying it. <laughs> I mean, not like you have a full full touch screen capability now, anyways. Yeah. Series, which they should. Hint, hint. Um, yeah, that would be such so, a massive step back. That would be crazy to do that. Yeah, I mean, it's it just. That's just the nature of the beast, right? Because well, you have to think, in essence, by releasing an A5, they're further segmenting their products. You know, because right now, that price point, that's, you know, that's still their aps territory. And those are some phenomenal cameras. You know? But if, for whatever reason, like you're one of those photographers that you are absolutely hung up on having the camera that has a full frame sensor and you don't want to spend a seven three money you know something's got to give like you know you you can't have everything for half the price it's just the the economics doesn't add up you know? so yeah i think it's you know small body but it's going to get similar if not the same af um the new Z battery, which isn't that new anymore, to be honest. Um, it might not be. I was going to mention that earlier. It might not be the Z battery. You think they're going to go back to the W battery? I highly doubt that because even the 6600 has moved on to the new battery. Yeah, but the 61 has the previous one, doesn't it? Uh, no, I think it no, I think they have both the new moved, one. I think they both moved. I, I should know this because I was at the launch. <laughs> One second. Yeah. It's been a minute since I've. Uh, yeah, we've been reviewing so many things in the meantime. But then so, you know, yeah. if you if you're talking about them taking out an EVF and taking out IBIS, then going back to an older battery might not be unimaginable because it wouldn't use as much power. Wouldn't I really power just hope. Uh, oh, Chris, you were correct. It does use that W battery. Yeah. That's I what mean, I thought. Okay. You know, it's adequate, um, but you know we've we've used full frame cameras that use the W batteries before, and they didn't last the longest. I mean, I still have one, but yeah. Oh, I mean, when when uh, back when I was still shooting with A7R2, I had like eight batteries. Wow. <laughs> you know, now I have two, and I'm good to go for an entire weekend. If I, I don't really have to recharge them. That was the old joke. You buy a Sony camera, you buy two lenses, and you buy like twenty batteries. Yeah, they they had a um, the W batteries weren't great because they just they were prone to you know draining very quickly. Um, they've drastically improved it with the Z batteries, thankfully. But yeah, going back, I mean, what else can they take out? Single card slots again? You know, it stinks, but you know when you're making so many cameras. Having you know having a spring for a second card slot does add to cost. So you know if you're trying to just shave every non-essential element from the camera to make it fit in that one thousand mark. You know you're you're gonna have to pay for this. So yeah, they can probably take out another control dial. Like the six thousand series has Do we like really two. Want to take out another control dial though, because the problem with the 6000 series is always like you know you don't have a joystick you, they kind of address that by you know having a touch like a lot by allowing you to focus using the touch screen but yeah clear. but i'm talking about the dials i'm not talking about the joystick oh sorry yeah oh yeah maybe yeah because you have the two at the top and then you have the one at the back right and they could probably take those out 
We're going to wrap this up quickly with uh, answering a couple of questions. What would, you, what would you guys want to see? You tell me. Brett, you can go first. I mean, pretty much like I, I put in that article the other day, maybe a, at least a 20 megapixel sensor, though I think they'll stick with an older generation of their 24 megapixel. I would love to see an EVF personally. I hate cameras without EVFs. Um, and I would be okay if it was an entry level with like a lower resolution one. Um, I mean, that's just, a, like you say, it's the trade-offs you make for an entry level camera. I think something like that would be okay. I need it to feel like an actual rangefinder style camera. Like the six Amazon series I've always felt were like small Mamiya sixes and Mamiya sevens. Um, so you want to get rid of the grip altogether? The Mamiya 6 and the Mamiya 7 do have grips. No, uh, no, I meant like, oh, I, I see what you're saying. So keep it the same, but smaller. Yes. Um, I mean, that's what I think. Personally, yes, I would get rid of the grip. Um, but it would need to be a wider camera, sort of like a Leica style camera. Right, they would but, have to turn the battery sideways instead of like this. Correct. Um, but Sony, I know, won't do that. So I need something, I guess I'll take it with a grip. And what I'll do is I'll probably, like, if the LCD flips up, I'll probably shoot with it, like, you know, TLR style, almost. And that'd be pretty fun. Actually, you know, that would be incredibly fun because I really hate actually doing this a lot. And recently, like, with the X100, I was actually doing this a lot. And it was very fun. And it was sort of liberating. Like, whenever I put my the camera up to my eye, sometimes I feel like, not like I'm losing the moment, but that, uh, you know, I, I can't even fully explain it. I have to figure out a way to really get in my own head and in my own emotions. It's just, it feels better in some ways. I don't know. It feels easier. But yeah, that's just me. Um, we had a couple questions in the chat. Um, Michael was saying, I shoot Sony. I like them overall, but they feel like PlayStations with lenses hanging off. This is me clapping. You are wonderful, Michael. I love you. Uh, Richard is saying, how heavy is the A7 series versus the 6000 series? You lose a stop or so with APS-C lenses, but lose weight, which is good for me as I'm 66 years old and don't want the weight. Uh, they're uh, quite a bit lighter. Yeah, it's significantly lighter. The uh, A six thousand series, that is. Yeah, uh, I could. I don't have my six thousand like right by me at the moment. So. If you're gonna go with the six thousand series too, I really recommend using the primes, um, or like the, the smaller. Yeah, the fifty one eight. Love that lens on, on the uh, on Sony. Or the twenty eight f two, or the thirty five two eight, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, Michael's also saying perfect A5 would be the A7 II with the A7III's autofocus and battery. Hmm, not bad. That's that's the A7 III. <laughs> yeah, basically, exactly. All right, next segment. Uh, Brett, you or me?